In that case, we can begin. So please let me know right away what were your what did you think were your problems in this matchup in particular? Um Well that that's the thing. It it starts off okay, I think. Um the the lane goes fine. It's not like an especially one lane. It's um I sort of I did what I can. I struggle against Medusa, but I think most people as Storm do. Um but like in most of my games, uh, I know I'm going to be like the tempo controlling hero, and I just can't play fast <laughs> when I have to. Um, and I think we kind of squander a lead, and we we end up losing this game. But it was looking okay, is what I felt. Um, so yeah, I'm not too sure. Okay, yeah, that's good enough. Um, right away at after the game loads in what are your thoughts about their draft how would you think you should play this how would you approach this matchup what would you say your goals would be for early game for mid game for the end game late game um laning against medusa uh probably don't die don't don't try anything too dangerous um uh survive the lane and make a gank pretty quickly because she's so tanky it's really hard to kill um, mid game, probably uh, like try and disrupt PL's farm, and see if you can like probably end the game really before Medusa and Techies make it too difficult to push. Uh, is what I think I'd try. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you I can see you're recognizing that letting them farm is a bad idea since they're very late game oriented team for both Lancer and Dusa. Both of them are really hard to take down. So you can recognize the power the power spikes lie in the early, in the early game and, and the mid game. So let's try to think how should we make this happen. Okay, let's see the leading phase first. Yeah, as as you said, uh, against Dusa, it, it's a good thing to just try to farm up. Since since she's a hard to kill target, so a kill lane this kind of an impossible ordeal here. Yeah, just just a, a take what you can get kind of farm lane, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, you should be getting mostly everything because she does not have tools to prevent you from farming unless you have bad placement for snake. So it's mostly free farm lane for, for both of you. Not really sure what went on in that rune fight, but that's fine. It's okay. I do have a note, though, same uh, a couple of my previous students, is that the first thing you should do in a match is just use that ward right away. Because if you're coming into lane with a ward visible, then the enemy simply knows your location. He will check often. And once you don't have the ward anymore, he can pretty much pinpoint where you have placed it. So that's... Not only you're not seeing the vision before the rune fight, which helps immensely, but you're also giving away potential ward location afterwards. Okay, and wh where's a good place to, to track it down? Just I, I usually with... place it around here, just so you can see both the small camp and the rune. For Radiant and for the higher, same place, but a different side. These, these are far further away spots, far enough away spots that the supports that would blindly place their Sentries would not catch them. Okay. The most important thing is their wind vision. You're not really, you don't really care about seeing the enemy hero. Yeah. Okay, this looks good. Okay, a very small note on efficiency. Mm -hmm. I I like this part. It's it's how it should be played. This part is correct. Because you you need to just stand in the river in the middle of the river just to make sure the remnant hits. And and that right now in this situation taking damage is necessary, and I approve of it. But a couple of seconds later, 
right here. Mm -hmm. Here we have a chance to minimize the damage we were taking. If you would click Dusa, since they're standing on top of your range creep, the melee creep of the enemy team will have vision on you and it will run to you on the high ground, which will essentially make you eat like three to five hits less because you're too far away from Medusa. Okay. It's, these li it's these little moments you should, you should recognize, try to recognize in the future uh, efficient ways to minimize damage because right now we have 417 health, we have opportunity to to change creeps positioning in a way that you can still safely last hit it, but you will take less damage in the process as well. But yeah, you running to the river just uh, opens you up for a whole lot of harassment here. Yeah, taking the snake is uh, it's rough. Yeah, snake and a few hits. It was avoidable, that's what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, another another point I'm gonna make here because uh, we haven't placed the ward previously, and you've made a little side quest of placing the ward now. Uh, you have missed the alternative to make the lane creeps beat up in your favor. So what yeah. I'm saying is, uh, as soon as the the first uh, wave was done. What you could have done is walked here and began to do some creep blocking. Which in the end would make the second wave meet either in the river or your high ground, which is beneficial. And you, what I'm saying is you should, again, look for those little beneficial moments where you can manipulate the lane to your advantage. Because in the end, it will help you have more resources and the enemy have less. I think I normally would have tried to block that wave, but no, you're right, I'd actually put the ward down, so I've wasted my own time. Yeah, and now uh, we have wave at the worst possible position. Fortunately, it was an easy fix. Medusa seems to be oblivious. She gave the creep away. Uh, then, okay, it's a, it's a good trade. Yeah, it, it, Could it's, have been better, um... but it's a good trade, yeah. But I mean, so far, so good. It's just those little efficiencies, but overall laning looks fine to me, so far. Yeah, my, I feel like my laning's okay. It's my mid game. I really slack up, and I don't, I don't get much done. Um, yeah. Uh, and yeah, I'd like, I'd like to be able to carry these kind of games, but I do sort of. I don't know. I waste so much time in them. Yeah, I think like, we'll be yeah. able to f figure out a solution to this game, which could be applied to other so. games. Yeah, this this is like uh, quite a lot of my games. Um, you know, it the win the lane, lose the game. Sometimes, you know, like not even win, just it goes fine, and I don't do anything with it. Yeah, yeah, I get you. I like how you took uh, remnant level level three because you recognize this is a farm lane, so vortex is not very good here. Yeah, that's, that's good. Honest. The stack was good. Honestly, pretty pretty good laning phase so far. Thank you. Minus those little, two little details. Actually, three little details. I can also make one more note here. Yeah. Is that while you're working on this camp, your eyes should still be scanning the minimap. And you would have recognized that at this very moment, as soon as you're going for the rune, just pause for a second and see what Medusa will do. Because what she does is she immediately leaves for the rune as well, which means you could have postponed taking this rune first, wait for your bottle to arrive, and then use the bottle and refill the rune at the same time. Okay, uh, I'm in that situation quite a lot where I have a bottle about to come or it's coming and there's a rune. Um, and I think like there, most times I do just, I just take the rune, but I see, I see why that's, um, you could be more efficient with it though. Yeah. With Storm, it's all about those little efficiencies because they add up. They add up fast. Hmm. I'm starting to notice I've got quite a few games now and it's like, time after time, I just, uh, I spend a bit too much mana and it's like, oh, I'm caught short here. Oh yeah, yeah. Mana is everything for Storm.
Clarity <laughs> was a little aggressive here. <laughs> Yeah, again, you recognize this, that the snake sometimes might leave their range creep vulnerable to good advantage. That's good. Mm. Until like the higher levels, it's quite easy to steal a deny. Yeah. yeah. Especially against a Medusa that just casts it like as soon as the wave meets, which I see quite a lot, to be honest. Yeah. I wanted to talk about how Storm versus Dusa is quite a farm lane, but looks like you know everything about it already. Yeah. I, I, Early game I, is settled. I play against the matchup enough times to know it's better to just <laughs> yeah, uh, stay remind, back a remind bit. me what MMR range is this match in? Uh I'm one K. This is one K match, yeah? Yeah. I would have guessed three K. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I I I, I, ne I never really played that much ranked uh after I started and yeah, it's I kinda just stayed here. And it's fun, but I'm kinda bored. I suppose. Well, I mean, if your all of your laning phases are this, like this match, I'm, I'm, I think I'm sure you would climb soon. Unless I'm gonna yeah. see some horrible shit in the mid game. Oh, uh, you're gonna see some bad zips. I'm sorry. All right, all right. I'm excited. Uh, it makes the character fun. But um, yeah, I find especially at this rank, you can really get away with um a lot, and I don't like that because it means that I like. I start doing riskier things that you would not get away with against better players. And when I stack with higher ranked friends, it really shows. Yeah, there's no one to punish you here, down here. Yeah, for sure. And that's right. like... Uh... Yeah, continue. Yeah, you go. Alright, so one more note on the efficiency. And something I have seen you do a little bit less than I would like you to do in the laning phase is that uh, in these moments where your range creep is on the high ground, and the melee creeps are in the low ground, in the middle. Try to make it a habit to drag them upstairs at all times. Anytime you see the situation, drag them upstairs. Because there's only benefits from this move, no downsides. Like right now, if you would drag them upstairs, up, up the high ground, you could stand further back and have way more time to react to Medusa Snake and not even get hit because you would move away. And naturally, because of the elevation difference, she would miss some last hits, you would have easier time. Basically, a habit in, in these kind of situations where a high ground pull is easily reachable, you should always abuse it. Yeah, okay. I'll be on the lookout for this. I, to, to, but, to my brain, this looks like okay, but I can see why having it on my high ground here, like one drag makes a lot of difference. Yeah, yeah, again. We're talking efficiency. Every single mm -hmm. thing counts. It adds up in the in the in the end. Yeah, no, it's exactly what I'm looking for. And I, I think I've I've told this to my other student, but every single second you're doing something, and any action you do, I mean, any second should have an action performed. And right now, you're, I think you've spent like four or five seconds doing absolutely nothing. So one of the actions could have been to pull the creeps to the high ground. Hmm. Yeah, wait, wait till you see my mid game, and I spend minutes doing just nothing. Oh, spoilers! <laughs> While the laning phase looks okay for a farm lane, you should try to do a little bit more stacking. Okay. Um, I can do. I can stack three times on the easy camp, but I have my like clock consciousness, I'm not always watching. Um, so, yeah, I guess just look at the clock a bit more. Yeah, luckily this is easily fixable, doesn't take a high amount of priority, just walk to the camp and click it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, one more thing that I often tell to my students is that during this entire laning phase you haven't while you had some downtimes walking here, walking here, or just dancing around the high ground, not once have you checked how your side lanes are doing. Like right now you're level six, you have kill potential. And prior <laughs> to getting level six you should have information. What is going on on the sides? For example, you haven't checked, but there's a high chance that the Lancer is low. 
no, he's not. But if, if he was low, he would have checked earlier. You would know that level. That's level six. Lancer might be low if he's low. Anytime you're going for a power rune, you can continue walking towards Lancer's direction, get a kill, teleport back. Uh, same thing on the bottom lane. It's a good habit to check, see if there's any kill potential. No, okay. There's not. And in this game, there is nothing, no kill potential, but I'm talking this to make it a habit in general. Yeah, I, I definitely don't check uh, like my other teammates' games enough to to like have the information to gank. It, I really should do some more. Um, in this yeah. game, I assume it's PL. I've got to try and and gank if I can. Like if I get a choice, I would choose him because he's the Posmo. I would say ganking is not on the menu in this game. Because okay. both both targets you are interested in ganking, both targets that suffer the most from being dead are Deuce and Lancer, and both of those targets are notoriously hard to kill. That's why I only mentioned if the Lancer is low, then you can make play. If he's high, you might get a kill, but you will spend so much mana, so much resources, and Deuce will have so much free seconds to hit your tower, that the entire ordeal is simply not worth it. So if I went to a side lane and killed a support and spent all of my mana, is that griefing my own game? Like yes. right now at minute five? Okay. Yes. If you went bottom, kill techies, kill tiny, I mean, they will suffer 20 seconds downtime. You've just gained as much gold as a single wave while Dusa dealt, dealt significant damage to your tower and now you have no mana. Yeah. Yeah, I'm in that position a lot. Every single rotation you do should have uh, higher enough impact to overthrow the costs of such gank, which is teleportation scroll and your mana. Did that make sense? Yeah, like you have to get more out of it than you're putting in. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, right now what we're doing is the correct way to play in this particular match. It's good to have. I could have stacked that and went for the rune. Oh, stack anyway, okay. That's a lucky stack. I don't think I really meant to do that. Okay, the, the ward is being refreshed. That's okay. I think you're the best laner from 1k MMR I have ever ever coached. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I've done it enough now. You must really throw your mid-game game, game then. Oh, yeah. <laughs> For sure. I do it so much. Like, I just... I find, you know, like, 30 minutes into a game, I want to make a zip. And then, like, I'll, I'll buy back without a TP. And the game is gone. I've done it so many times. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my friend shouted at me, but I'd, I'd shout at me too. <laughs> okay, let's talk at this moment. I don't see any reason for you to be right here right now. You know you're not gonna kill Luza, you're not, you're not, you know you're not gonna deal too much, too many damage to the tower, because she's defending it. So you shouldn't be even spending here time at all. Because there's nothing okay. to accomplish in this moment at this place, do you see it? Um, my my instinct is like, run and threat and denies, that's, that's kind of what I was doing there, but... Yeah, I see, like, I don't even get any denies, I'm only putting myself in danger, I'd rather yeah. like, I guess, farm yeah. a camp. The, mind, the mindset would be correct if this was a uh, wave 3, wave 4, but not after level 6. She has tools to wave clear. You have tools okay. to wave clear. There is there is no reason for you to try to play the deny game in the first place. Even so, at, at the match beginning, we have pretty much concluded that Dusa is uh, ungankable, so what you should be doing is just spending every single second thinking how to maximize your own farm which is pre-stacking camps or moving here. 
So, and what I'm seeing right now is we've just spent like 20 seconds on a goal that at best is unachievable at worst is griefing. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Like, imagine the same 20 seconds period, but instead you have cleared a smaller big camp. Massive difference. Yeah, like a, a, a missed opportunity, I see. That's literally just GPM being lower at the end of the game because of running under that tower there, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if efficiency was a percentage score, and let's say you're like at 85% efficiency and the other lead is like at 90%, that's already like 500 or something MMR difference. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> there it is. Let's try to decide if this was a good rotation in the first place. Uh... So yeah, you're, you're clearing this camp and at some point you decide to teleport. I want to see what information you had to make that decision. Okay, so we move the camera here, and that's that's where you are deciding right now. I've probably already decided I'm going, to be honest. Uh, yeah, you, you haven't checked on Nursa, you just saw Shadow Shaman being low, and that was your decision-making point. I think that's way too early to decide. Oh yeah, the, the fact that I, I end up with literally nothing from the gang, yeah, it's way too early. Okay, so let's say you saw Urs as well, you saw Medusa teleporting, and then you still decided to teleport. Um, yeah, I want you to, to try to install a kind of thinking pro process in you for teleportations like these. One second. So, this is the information you would have normally. I mean, you can see Shaman is low. What can you assume from this information that the Shaman is low? He's probably going to die and not be able to support her, so... No, something else. Uh, they cast spells on him? No, something else. Um... No, can't think. All right. If Shaman is this low, it is not natural for Shaman to normally be this low. This means he just ate a very big spell from Techies. Would you assume that's correct? Um. Yeah, I won't be surprised. Yeah, because he is so low, he probably ate either most likely a suicide. And that's why he's being so low right now. And with this information, we can switch our attention to Ursa. Because we have just concluded that Tekis does not have uh, his suicide, do they have a re realistic chance to kill Ursa? Uh, right now, with his damage reduction, no. But... Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm not sure. I think if Ursa left now, he might live. No. Without suicide, with a tiny mana state, they have no way to kill Ursa. If, if Ursa wishes so, he just walks back, nothing's happening. The safe laner is safe. And what I'm saying here is that your rotation is simply not necessary. Because a safe laner is safe in no threat, Shadow Shaman... You really don't care about Shadow Shaman right now. He's a support, he's, it, it, it is his job to die. However cruel this sounds. So what information you're getting from this is that because the carry is not in danger, your rotation isn't needed, and as a bonus, you can see that Dusa has just wasted her teleport. She has no way to kill Ursa, and she's essentially, essentially stranded in this lane. Ursa has no problem going to jungle after this. So ideally, I would say what you should be doing after getting this information. Instead of rushing for teleportation, spend a few seconds, do the mental math, on 
what's happening right now. And the solution would be to take this moment to pressure the mid tower. And as a bonus, in 10 seconds, you will also get a free rune. Yeah, <laughs> I can see that now. Did that quite, make sense? Um, yeah, for sure. Like, I, watching this play kind of hurts. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm quite an I mean, impulsive player, I think, which is a good and not, a bad thing. It's not a bad play per se. I mean, with a little bit better champ, you would have killed techies. So I guess it would sort of have equalized, but what I'm saying is there were more efficient movements. Yeah, there's better things to do. Yeah, pretty much. And, and like I said, uh, like five or ten minutes ago, now you're doing the walk of shame with no mana. Yeah, <laughs> it happens a lot. Less mana now. The thing is about, about their draft is while we have concluded that uh, ganking them is not really good, beneficial, or possible, the the same also applies to to your team because their cores will be AFK farming for the entirety of early and mid game. Your rotations will not be necessary, and you have all the space in the world to just quick rush your orchid uh there's, there's no quick rushing going on here it's like a 15 16 minute, yeah i think i mean if you're looking for kills in this scenario you're just you're just killing your timings when the draft simply allows you for really great timings but as long as you kill the lancer the rotation makes it okay so in a game when i'm not trying to make sort of pre 10 minute rotates am i just money 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 get get lost it what was that a question yeah like if if i if i can't well how, how, sorry well i mean that's kind of what's been said how would i know when is a bad time to make rotates if, if it's just not like they won't die um I think same as we have discussed. If if there's no good cores to kill, then the rotations are not necessary. If your side lanes are doing fine, then the rotations are not necessary. The rotations are for the sake of space, because no matter how you look at it, rotating will always economically yield less than if you would have just AFK farm three camps or something. Okay. Now, for example, if, let's say, enemy carries Luna, easily killable, and you sneakily come with a rune, kill Luna, and just walk back a bit, walk back a bit and hide yourself in bushes, and Luna thinks the danger is gone, you're walking back to mid lane, and if you kill Luna again, that's it, her laning is over. She, she have ways to teleport, uh, she died twice, your off lane is strong now. In these cases, where you can consistently kill enemy mid, enemy carry, if they are weak enough, then their rotation will always be worth it. Okay, I'll try to bear that in mind. But yeah, against targets, which take so many resources to kill, like like Lance or like Dusa, those make not good rotations. <laughs> Like right now you're hanging around towers with nothing to do again. Well, you should be FKing in the jungle because the enemy draft allows you to do so. I don't even know what I'm looking for here. I don't know either. Uh, an opening, I guess. Uh, that's it. Storm, Storm early game, he best works like one on one, one versus two. If there is a lane with four people, just bail out. It's unlikely you'll get uh, good kills. And more importantly, if there's four heroes in one lane, this means some other lane is pretty much empty. So it's either a tower kill or a solo hero kill. So early game, it's always best to be, to not be exactly where the enemy is. 
and be on the a little bit more empty lanes. If they group, you get out. Okay. They, they, they will be simply wasting space on nothing. And even give, giving space to you to threaten towers somewhere else. Because right now, the last 5 minutes, while you could have comfortably finished Orchid already, I can see you're a little bit confused where you want to be. Yeah, very. Like, uh, in my mind, I don't want to be, like, sitting and hitting the creeps while my team struggles and dies. But also, by being here, I am making it harder for myself to help them in 5 minutes' time. Yeah. Also, let's we can look at it, this from an uh, economical perspective. If they have, if they are pooling so many resources in in this little lane here, if they're uh, sending Dusa here, if they're sending Lance or somewhere close, this means what I have just discussed about your gameplay. The same thing is happening to them. Like Medusa is also hanging around a lane that where she cannot reliably kill or push, and she's wasting her potential to flash farm. So if you're recognizing this this opportunity, while the enemy is wasting space to, to claim the space. That already makes it like double the worth it would have been before. Okay. Like, if you look at the net worth at, at, at the left, Dusa isn't even farming. She's also kind of clueless where she wants to be, just like you. Yeah, I can see. Well, at least you have acted as a bait here. <laughs> yeah, two out of three times I would have made it out of the suicide. Yeah. Right you know, now, right now. Before, I, I would have guesstimated this is a 3k game just from the laning phase. Right now, I can see why it's a 1k game. That there's just eight people in the worst lane possible like... doing nothing. Yeah. Like that, that's kind of ni that's neither good. team ga gains anything from taking either tower. <laughs> I'm not sure what's the what's the convention and convention center play is doing here. Yeah, it's it, it happens a lot in um, my bracket where people sort of like they see other people on the map and they go, "I will be here, otherwise I'm I'm not in the right place." And like players just stay for minutes and minutes. And I, I'm guessing that the best thing to do is is to not be one of the people that stays. Yeah, I mean, there's a, there could be some good fly metaphor to be said here. But anyway, yeah, if you recognize, if you are able to recognize these situations, just by not participating in this, you, you're already making the right place. Yeah, like I've, I've watched this and I've been like, why do I keep getting 15, 16 minute orchids? And it's because I'm, yeah, I'm standing around like this. I've compliment, I'm complimented your complimented your laning phase for the first ten minutes, and then in the next five minutes you do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is how I feel. Like I've watched so many guides and videos and pros play the like laning phase. I feel like I'm okay at that. And then like, I mean, you've seen it straight away. Like I, I just don't know where to be, what to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I think so far we gave you a pretty good ideas of how we can play this particular matchup and similar ones. Yeah, absolutely. There we go. After six minutes, we have teleported. I don't know why teleported somewhere else. Okay. Uh, one more thing, which you would you may may be able to conclude from the draft on your own games is that, while we have recognized that they are extremely farm important, at one point or another, both Dusa and PL will have to compete for the jungle. You as a mid laner or a support can grab a few observers and try to play some sneaky wards on the key spots where you know they will be competing for the farm. Like a triangle here. That's a good spot on the trees, somewhere near the bath rune. Or somewhere here. A any placement which would let you see two camps, because anytime Lancer or Doos approaches those two camps, they will be visible. And, and even better with the skirmishes, 
which happened at the bottom lane. Many times Dooza and Lancer would be low, they would try to go to base, and in their minds, to be efficient, they would maybe try to take the camp, which is on the way to the base. And if you, if you would still play on the river, where the runes are, those spots would be easily reachable to you and make for potential snipes for Lancer or Dooza. Yeah, that's something I could do a lot more in my games is put up wards that are helping me kill farming cores. I yeah, yeah, I I don't do that enough. Can you see me looking for the zip? I I have seen you looking for opening to kill Lancer, but as soon as you saw a wyvern there, that's it. You are no longer able to engage. She will save you. She will save Lancer every time. Hmm. Yeah, I... I kind of just hoping she's not going to press it, I guess. And, and there she is, she's pressed it. Luckily, yeah, uh, they're both... Not... Ideally, in better MMR <laughs> ranges, she would have ultimated you or the Oracle. That didn't happen here. So I guess you sort of got lucky here. Yeah, I've at this but rank, it, I've it, never it, seen yeah, a weapon yeah. help. It's <laughs> not the play you should be making, I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Mm, this is what I mean as well with like trying to make riskier plays that against any like half-decent players you don't get away with. Like That yeah, would be punished yeah. so much worse. Yes. The earlier you start working on that, at recognizing when, you sh when, you're not sh <laughs> when you should not make the play, the better. Mm, that's what I mean. I'm quite an impulsive player. Like if I see something, I'm like, oh, I could do it. I I probably will, and like that gets me killed, but it also gets me kills, and it, like, yeah, it's just learning to like rein it in, I guess. It's actually a really good. I mean, I, I would say it's a required mindset to play Storm effectively, because any player that hesitates would miss many many opportunities for a quick jump, quick snap before the enemy team is able to react. So while, while it's a really good thing to be able to seek out opportunities, if, if let's say you make 10 jumps and 9 jumps are successful and on the 10th one you die, I would say that's good. But if you see yourself recognizing those opportunities and uh, taking advantage of those opportunities and you do five jumps to get a good kill on a core, and on, and on the other five, you get killed instead. In that case, I should I should say you should restrain yourself a little bit and train, train your thought process to recognize the those opportunities you're taking, which might lead to a bad outcome. Thank okay. Which we we had we had two of those so far the the teleportation to the bottom lane five minutes ago, and right now we'll answer. Yeah. Just because something works out doesn't mean it couldn't have been done more efficiently. I feel that a lot, especially in those plays, because like while I didn't die for either of them, which is like the worst thing you can do, it's yeah. it's the I could just sit and hit creeps and it would have been better. I would even go as far and say that this is not a good Orchid game. And with the space, the enemy naturally allows you by drafting two FK farming cores. I don't say this a lot, but this is a perfect game for a Bloodstone. Early Bloodstone instead of Orchid. Okay, what well, what what is early for a Bloodstone? Come again? Uh, what what's what sort of timing is early for Bloodstone? Uh. I don't know, I haven't built Bloodstone in like 6 months, but when I did, when I rushed it, I think I had 16 minutes in, in, in average. Thank okay. you. I just don't see my, in my bracket, I don't see many opportunities for Bloodstone, but if if the, the, the draft you're facing is common, like two farming cores, yeah, early Bloodstone is the best item Storm can have, if the draft allows it for it. Okay, and that would be into like a slower pace game? Yeah, you were no the enemies will not be able to pressure as much and your side lanes should be doing either fine or, or just okay. Why are you in the bottom lane again? 
What draws you here? <laughs> oh, it's my favorite place, clearly. Um, yeah. I don't know. I see the whole team there, and I go there. That's uh, that's kind of. Do you have all, all the do you have all the ultimates? Uh, luckily, they don't know how to use those ultimates. <laughs> no. But, but yeah, this is this is not not a good place for you to be, at all. I mean, you just lucked yourself. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, to one K. <laughs> yeah, one copy one K. Same thing. It it worked out, but it wasn't supposed to work to work out. Yeah. And and we were trying to discuss the better plays to make, which which are supposed to work out. I I find that a lot. I watched a whole load of like educational content and. So many of the situations they talk about don't really apply to 1K games because it requires players to be doing like the the right thing so that you can like work with that or abuse it, and you know play play people just chain TP to bot lane, uh, <laughs> stuff like this. Yeah, uh, it's. It... But in the long run, it doesn't matter as long as you yourself practice those good efficiencies, uh, good rotations. You will inevitably climb just by this pack alone, just because you're more efficient than your peers in this MR range. I hope so. I've been I've been um, fluctuating at like one k for a while now. Like sometimes I'll go up a hundred, then down a hundred, but I don't seem to go up past sort of one point one, one point two. I never really grinded it though. Yeah, you gotta do your, you gotta do your own thing, just because. Uh, Four of your teammates have jumped from a building. Doesn't mean you jump too. You go to a different building and jump from there. Yeah. That's that's one of the things I've been trying to work on in the last sort of hundred or so games is really playing my own game because in games like this where I I don't and I go and I I get distracted, it reflects in my net worth and then like we eventually lose and it's. Yeah, I don't want to be like the character that's never involved, but I also I don't want to get too involved and find it hard to find the balance. It's okay to not get involved. It's okay. At this MMR range, more often than not, you can afford to not be involved at all. That's all right, so uh, as, a, as an exercise, let's say you're in this game right now, you're the Storm, you're playing Storm, and you, you, you ask yourself, where do I want to be? Where do I want to play for the next few minutes? Um, all the towers are gone. I would try and pressure their jungle by sitting in the in the off lane and taking creeps. Yeah, ideally, you would ask your support to smoke with the wards. Maybe smoke with you, or just smoke you with the wards. And since you pretty much can confirm that they are all in the jungle, deep wards are not a good possibility because it would get discovered or, or you and, and or the support would die in the process. But simple wards that still cross into the river give rune vision and cover up a few camps. Those would make it ideal to make to allow you to make several moves. It would allow you to snipe low course, it would allow you to snipe supports that come for the ward. And it would also allow you to safely push deeper, more aggressively, like say you could take creeps here, because you would have vision of Lancer, Deuce, or maybe Techies. Not many not many things kill you here, you have a lot of freedom here. So by placing, it's basically a division game right now, by placing uh, the wards in strategic locations like this, where you can see a little bit of course, a little bit of course both ways it allows you to snipe those scores snap those supports and push aggressively with the vision we have right now none of those things are possible and you're basically confined in your own jungle competing with farm with Ursa, which is not good for for either of you mm. or i'm in the bot lane just wasting time <laughs> What's going on? <laughs> Wait. I, don't, I, don't, I don't have an excuse. You 
Yeah, both teams are doing their own thing. Which would be fine if the draft was different. But right now, any any second you guys track this game out, they're going to be way stronger in the late game. That's just part of playing against a Medusa especially, isn't it? Like... And the Lancer. You have two ultra late game cores. Every second you track this game out, you're just basically confirming the loss. You as a mid laner, especially as a playmaking mid laner, you should look for every opportunity. Right now, for every opportunity to create space. You can create space by split pushing, you can create space by invading jungle and threatening. AFK farming right now, after Orchid is the last thing you should do. I did say okay. AFK farm in the first 10 to 15 minutes because the enemy will allow you to, but as soon as you meet your power spike of the first item, Orchid, Bloodstone, this is where, where you're able to pick up supports. And that's what you should be looking to do. You should play aggressively. Like what you did right now in this moment in the replay, that's good. You push top lane. And that's the place you should seek. I mean, you shouldn't rotate back to jungle. You should go deeper. Try to seek out their positioning. Always keep an eye on the minimap. So, for example, if you see, if you see Tiny on the bottom lane, Tiny is the one, only one that can one-chat you, apart from mines. If you see Tiny in the bottom lane, the mid lane and top lane is where you play, because it's unlikely you will get killed there. Basically, you, you respond to their positioning, and you'll be somewhere else. If you cannot team fight, if you can't team fight, I mean, you can always, you guys, five of you can always smoke with Ursa, with Orchid, make some plays. You're stronger early game. So basically, you have many, many options, and farming is still the least prioritizable option. Okay. Okay, now let's see this team fight. I can see that both teams kind of accidentally eat into each other. Yeah, this this is this is just like they they bump into each other. And one thing I'm cringing at right now, no offense, is that on the minimap there's been ruckus going on for like twenty seconds, and not once have you glanced at it to get yeah. information. Um, I like, I, I'm I know I'm looking at the minimap, but I haven't. Yeah, I, I haven't checked that, but... Like, if for example someone was low and walking away, one zip secures it. And that's the information you want to have at all times. You also need to, uh, to know items, like if you see Lancer, if there's no Orchid, just make the zip, Lancer is dead. Same with Winter Viber, and if, if she is anywhere close to Vision where you can reliably jump on her, take her out, that's it, their team fight is lost. Like, there are so many opportunities to initiate the play here, since we can pretty much confirm that skirmish is going to happen. So as soon as you confirm that skirmish is going to happen, you should make, you should look for ways how you can begin the skirmish advantageously. Did that make sense? Yeah, ways to tilt it in your favor as early as possible. Yeah, and then you zoom in exactly by the time the team fight is pretty much over. Yeah, without confirming the location of the Winter Wyvern. Yeah, that's that's my sentence. You, sh you should confirm the location of the Winter <laughs> yeah. Wyvern first and try to jump her. Yeah, I got told in a game, uh, I think yesterday, to just spend my time focusing on Winter Wyvern. And uh, yeah, I think I forgot to do it most of the time. Yeah. She's the only target that can disrupt the team, team fight with just one button. I can see your team has 3k lead in the early game, which is really good, but... Th yeah, this is what I don't know lead. how to use that lead to win. Like, uh, my, my problem, I think, anyway, is that I, I can't set tempo and I can't set it quickly. I know that's hard to do, especially in this game, but... Like, I, I, I felt like I could never get the ball rolling. I would say it was never attempted properly 
to get that ball rolling. Okay. Like you, during these 15 minutes of the mid game, there was like one, one occasion where we have crossed into the entirety of dire area. Whereas where where like we discussed it that's where you should have been making plays for the last ten minutes. The dire jungle, the dire camps, the dire side uh, the dire lanes. Okay, I, I tend to play a lot more in my own jungle, so uh or, or my own side of the map. I guess I could spend you're, uh, you're just more taking time on farm side. from your carry then. Hmm. Yeah. I recognize that now. I'm just watching myself compete with him for farm here. I don't know what yeah, I'm doing. Not, not, not only are you not making space, you're taking space away from the person you're supposed to make space to. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> pain, pain. Most of the time I would have used the regen rune and died with that being well, used as well. So this is this is good. This is good. It's it's not a bad play, it's just unlucky play. I have no comment here. It's just techies. Yeah, just techies things. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think the biggest uh, contributing factor to your loss is the the fact that no attempt to pressure the mid game on their side was made. Okay. I really I really don't do that much in, in my game, so I'm, I'm going to try to do that some more, but like, um, I don't know, I think I'd be scared to, to play on their side, but I can see already why that would be a good idea. Yeah, as long as I can plant a good habit into your head, then we're, we're already making progress. That's what I'm here for. Brilliant. So yeah, I mean, <laughs> Fast five minutes, we, we have watched uh, that fourth lead dwindling away little by little. <laughs> and it's yeah. only going get, to get, get worse from there. Yeah, th this is how a lot of my games look. I mean, I'm not saying this game is winnable even with the proper... proper... proper uh, mid-game movements. Because their team is really good at preventing pushes. Hell, I would I would even say this game is destined to be lost if both teams play correctly because they drafted better. Mm. So while That's this something. game wouldn't be winnable, still we can discuss ways to make our plays better. And often the enemy will not play ideally as they should. And if you get big enough lead with the early game movements, even in games like these. Where, where draft-wise, you are destined to lose. Purely by plays, you create enough advantage to lock them in the base, farm the entire map, and end. But yeah, I hope you can see how much time you're spending on the camps. Well, like, uh... Too much, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can see watching it back. I'd much rather be trying to, well, like maybe five or ten minutes ago, make some plays, and now it's kind of like dead time. Oh, and we haven't even talked to Timization. What's up with the Yules? Um, survive, I guess. I find, um, I'll put my th this this happens. I I put myself in a lot of really bad places, uh, from worse zips I've learned in like trickier games, to to pick up an orchid. Uh, is it the best item right now? Probably not. But um, yeah. Right. What would you recommend? Still, uh, first things first. Why Yules in this match in particular? I, 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 what's what was your thought process here? What is it for? Um, when Medusa ults, I know you can just face away, but you can Yules her. Um, 
disrupt wyverns disruption maybe if pl gets a diffusal blade i'll use myself uh, so he won't burn me down too quickly um yeah just just give me some thinking room right so basically what i've gathered is that in, in your thought process was pretty much to build uh, use just for Dusa Sult because let's face it, for the Lancers diffusers you can just zip away a little bit and that's it. So what I'm saying is that an item should have multi-purpose and just for the sake of Medusa's ultimate this is kind of a waste of money. Because apart mm. from that, while I would agree that uh, ulting Dusa allows your entire team to reposition, that's quite cool, but in any other any other moment where you use yules on yourself to maybe evade something, you're just setting yourself up for death. Like you zip somewhere, you get rooted by techies. You might think you would yules and zip away. Nope, tiny with the blink is already there. Or techies with the suicide is already there. Same with Lancer. Uh, if you have used yules and then you get mildly rooted by techies or, or, or tiny, Lancer just burns your mana. So what I'm saying is yules should cover like way more than just one purpose. Otherwise, it's not worth the money. And overall, I would advise you to not even build yules at all. In the current meta, I haven't found many occasions where I absolutely need yules. BKB, straight away after Orchid or Sajan Kaya, would 99% of the time be the better options. Okay. I buy a lot of yules, so I'll, uh, I'll try to cut back on that. Stop, stop buying yules. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, another uh, impulsive zip. Yeah, that's okay, it happens. I also sometimes just zip, zip to my death. Yeah, well, it, it's, it's a rush. You know, it's fun. I suppose. Yeah, I don't think we can gather any more useful information from this match. Uh, would you have more questions? Um, uh, in general or about this match? I've got one or two general ones. Yeah, sure. Go, go for it. Um, a build I really like, especially into teams like uh, PL and Illusion Heavy, is you go for the Ag Shard and then the level 25 talent. And you play around like a 20 minute timing. Is that, like, viable, or is that just a bit of a gimmick? Like, if you go for maybe Treads, Kaya, then Agshard at 20 minutes, and then Threatened Powers. Did you say level 25 talent? Uh, yeah, the double overload bounce. And then set 20 minutes? Oh no, that's the, that's like the end game goal. Like, at 20 minutes, the Agshard means, it, you know, you, oh. you win more fights. Uh... That's what I always build. I build yeah. X shard. I, I will always have shard before level twenty five. Yeah, but 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 before you build a shard, you must always have a checklist to cross of of uh, essential items before you can afford a shard. So most of the time, you need to take care of defensives. So it's either BKB or Lincoln's or Aeon disc. Before you can buy the shard. You must have the offense taken care of, which is usually Orchid, and the defense, which is PKB, Lincoln's, or the other thing. Once you have taken care of the essentials, then yes, shard is good. Uh, timing is usually correct for the overload bounce thing. And I would pepper pepper it all up with a Bloodthorn on top. Okay. Yeah, this match is doomed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I can feel it when you're playing one of these. Right, so to summarize this match, uh, this match, while it wasn't really clear if you would be able to win this with the correct movements, I would say your biggest hubris so far is not, not being more aggressive on the enemy side of the map. That's a very easy takeaway to thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, while the takeaway is this, we we did discuss many, many ways in which you can achieve this takeaway goal. 
yeah. All right, unless you have some more questions, I think we can end the session. No, no, I got, I got no more questions. That was pretty useful, actually. All right, think it over. Try to apply in in in, in your few, few in your games. I yeah. will. Um, yeah, well, amazing. I'll I might look about another session sometime. Um, play a really horrible game, and I'll let you know. Um, <laughs> cool. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, man. Um, yeah. I guess good, good. night. Yep, good luck, good night.